All right, welcome to Micro Lecture 14.1. Uh, this lecture is going to be a little bit different than uh, what I originally had intended to go with. Um, we're going to be talking about the impact of the criminal justice system on civil disorder. And the reason I'm changing this up is, of course, that we are living through, um, really, perhaps, the historical watershed of questioning many of the fundamental things about prisons and the courts and the police. Now, I want to emphasize that this micro lecture is very much talking about perception. And I want to be clear there can be a difference between perception and reality. So let me make that uh, point again at the end, and, and perhaps it'll be clearer then. Um, I like to start off with uh, a quote from uh, Mayor Richard Daley of Chicago in the 1960s when I was a child, uh, there were some major riots in Chicago, and Daly, who was kind of famous for misspeaking, gave this very famous quote. Uh, the policeman isn't there to create disorder. The policeman is there to preserve disorder. Now, he didn't mean that. Um, but if you think about it, um, the police are not supposed to create problems. Um, but you can fairly ask, beyond the police, the entire system, is the system today really triggering problems as opposed to preventing them? And today's riots and protests are being triggered by the behavior or the perception of the behavior of the criminal justice system. So I think there's three things to look at, just like our book. Uh, the police can be accused of callous and deliberate acts of cruelty. Um, the prosecution can seem to be in collusion with the police, and prisons can seem to be used only against, or primarily against, uh, the poor and minorities. So turning to this whole idea of the police, systems, particularly criminal justice systems, function on the acceptance of the authorities of the people doing them. And police effectiveness is based upon the acceptance that the police have authority. Well, this goes all the way back to our first few lectures. We talked about Sir Robert Peel, where he said, you know, recognize that the public are the police and the police are the public. And if that's there, if the cooperation is there, then the police become a much more effective organization. Now, this is where I'm going to introduce the concept of perception. Regardless of whether it is true or false that the police are acting in a callous way or a biased way, if the public thinks that is true, then there will be an impact. So there's really a two-tier two track here. There will be less cooperation with the police and there'll be more friction with the police. If the perception is, regardless of what the reality is, the perception is that they're not acting fairly. Um, what about the prosecution of crimes? Well, Justice Scalia, the late Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, or an excuse me, Chief Justice, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, and then not a liberal by any stretch of the imagination, wrote, the appearance of justice is as important as reality. Um, there is a perception, again, that the prosecution are too close to the police and do not investigate police misconduct. Very often there appears to be a conflict of interest between these groups. Uh, if the prosecutors are too zealous, then they're usually accused of being overly zealous and too political in the behavior. If they're too lenient, they're accused of being too close to police. Uh, I'm going to recommend, if you want, to read about this a little bit more. There's an article from Emory University Law School. It's an excellent one, fairly recent article, called Restoring Public Confidence in the Criminal Justice System, Policing Prosecutions When Prosecutor, Prosecutors Prosecute Police by Caleb Robertson. There's a, a link to it. Um, but this is uh, one of the problems in the prosecution. If they go too far one way or if they go too far the other way. Uh, and what does the public see? Final 
piece of this puzzle, I think, is the prison industrial complex. The prison system is in this crisis, and it is being accused of being created and run for the purposes of repression and profit making. The perception remains that there is a pipeline where the poor and minorities are incarcerated and fined at far higher rates for lesser crimes that, that are much greater than a white collar criminal. And with 18% of federal prisons and 7% of state prisons now run as for-profit businesses, this perception has only been reinforced. And I want to close with this five minute lecture by talking about this perception reality, because this is very key here. I don't want you to walk away from this lecture saying, I believe the police are corrupt or that the police are corrupt. I believe that the prosecutors are corrupt, or they are. Um, but all of these are important, even if they are false statements. If the public believes them to be true, they will act on that assumption. If they are, in fact, true, they will act on the facts. So we have to determine if they're true. If they're true, we have to fix the problems. If they're false, we have to fix the perception. You have to convince people, show people, prove to people that the system is not corrupt. If you can do that, then you can change the perception. If you can't, then regardless of whether there is or is not this corruption and collusion and uh, exploitation, um, it won't matter if people believe it to be true.